Welcome back. We have a very mixed market signal over here. We have some bearishness in the stock market and bullishness in the bond market. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at the Federal Reserve interest rate futures, uh, predicting the next interest rate uh, meeting. That in just a moment. This today is change in treasuries, short term bond uh, unchanged. That's a one month treasury, two month. Uh, note is up two basis points. This is in terms of basis points. The biggest move we see today are the longer term, medium and longer term bonds down eight basis points on the three year, five, uh, six basis points on the five year, etc. So we're seeing a little bit of yield decline in the longer term. However, this is not the trend that we've seen lately. This is where the current U.S. Treasury stand right now. Now you'll see on the left hand side, starting on the shortest term maturities, uh, one month T notes. Uh, 554 yield, two month, 553. We have a 553 yield all the way through the six month, 535 on the one year. And then we have the severe drop that we all know is the inverted bond curve where the 10 year bond only pays a 402. The short term bonds pay a lot more. Typically, again, we expect the longer term maturities like the 10, 20, 30 to pay a higher yield than the short term. And the message the bond market is telling us is in the short term, we expect high or higher interest rates. But in the long term, uh, the bond market sees you know trouble over the long term, so to speak. Now, this is the one month change in treasuries. And this is actually quite remarkable. This is how treasury yields have changed over the past month. The 30 year is up 6%. Now it's a 6% change in the treasury. It's not up 6%, you know, up to 6% yield. It's a 6% change, but it is a largest move. The 20 year is up around 5%, 10 year around 4%, which is actually remarkable. We spoke about this uh, a few times over the past couple of months. We have an inverted bond market, and if we expect the inverted bond market to end on an optimistic note, we would expect the longer-term yields to increase. Why? Because it would tell us over the long term, the bond market is expecting a rosier outlook, you know, better economic conditions, meaning higher interest rates. Higher interest rates means that the economy can support it, the economy justifies it. Conversely, if we see the inverted bond market end, by means of the short-term yields crossing down below the long-term yields, that would spell trouble. Well, we're seeing right now what looks like the former. Longer-term yields are increasing. Now, this is what it looks like in terms of the spread. The blue line is a 10-year bond. The red line is a one-year bond. The one-year obviously is above the 10-year, and that indicates uh, that demonstrates the uh, inverted bond curve. Now, the histogram bars pointing to the negative side show us to the degree of the inversion. You see this long histogram bar all the way to the right? That's around 1.3. What is that? That's a 1.3% or 130 basis point inversion, meaning the one year is at 130 basis points higher or 1.3% higher than the 10 year. The 10 year is approximately 4%. The one year is approximately 5.3%. That's the inversion. Notice where we came from. We had an inversion of 1.6%. Uh, now that has decreased. How did it decrease? It's not that the one year moved down. It didn't. It's hugging right near the highs. It's that the 10 year moved up. And this is what we're talking about. As the 10 year crosses up or starts to approach the one year, we would expect that that indicates a more rosy long-term outlook. So the bond market is telling us that maybe the Fed has done the right thing. They raise interest rates just enough to slow down inflation, but not too much to, his, uh, to damage the economy, to hurt jobs. Now, we know the jobs numbers this past week were on the soft side. We can expect that. You know, they're not going to stay at all-time highs while the Fed raises rates more than it ever has, I think probably in history, uh, during this period of time. So the job market has softened, but at least according to the numbers, it has not collapsed. Now, this is a 10 two-year spread, 10-year bond, two-year bond. It's the same thing. The 10 years are red line, uh, the blue line, the, the two years are red line, and we can see the inversion has decreased. Once upon a time, and we're talking about you know mid-July, 
we had over a 1%, around 110%, 110 basis point inversion, 1.1% 1 .1%, uh, inversion. And then we see, obviously, the blue line has moved up to approach the red line. Now, we're not out of the woods yet. This is only the direction. This is direction based on the market that we know right now. But as far as the bond market's telling us, the Fed has done the right thing and that we're seeing, we're expecting over the long term a little bit better interest rates, a little bit higher interest rates, meaning it's not forecasting disaster, as opposed to what the bond market was telling us in March, where we had the two year all the way up at 5%, and we had the uh, 10 year at 4%. A 1%, actually even more of an inversion than that, over a 1% inversion at that point. That inversion has decreased. It's still inverted though. So that's, you know, exercise a little bit of caution. We're not out of the woods yet. Now, that's the bond market. That's good news. Here's the stock market. Not so much good news. Stock market, the S&P 500. That's red line. Now it's moving up. Now the VIX, which is the volatility index, it's a calculation of the near term most uh, the the options on the S and P five hundred that will expire the soonest the near term options, and it measures uh, the the premium on those options is the VIX. It's a volatility index. It's also known as a fear index. When the stock market goes up, traders just buy stocks. We don't need options. But when the stock market goes down, we sell covered calls, we buy protective puts, the premiums on the options rise, and therefore the VIX rises. So the VIX moves opposite of the stock market. Now, we don't see the VIX here, but the blue histogram bars show us that time, those periods of time, that the VIX was below 15. You see, when the VIX is below 15, it says that the market is very complacent. It's very strong. There's nothing to worry about. It shows us really the tops of the market, not only the tops, but the strongest parts of the market. When the VIX is below 15, at or below 15, it shows us that the market is, is in a very strong, consistent trend to the upside. Go back to 2015. Imagine we just started buying the S&P 500 and held on to it as long as the VIX stayed below 15. We would have bought the S&P 500 around 2000 and more or less it stayed below 15. These blue histogram bars remained until 2800. Well, then we had a little bit of a hiccup. The VIX crossed above 15. We had this space in between. We said, okay, we'll buy it again when the VIX crosses back below 15. Well, we got back in around 2700, all the way up to around 2900. Then we had our COVID stock market crash. Well, no, that's a little bit down over here. Sorry. 2018, 2019, we had a little bit of a hiccup. Then the VIX resumed back down below 15, all the way up to 3300. Then we had our COVID stock market crash. The VIX crossed above 15 and the stock market collapsed. Well, the VIX remained above 15 this entire time. So I know the stock market was strong, but it was strong at least in terms of the premiums on the options. The stock market was not strong enough to give us a lot of complacency, to give us a lot of comfort. Well, now this is where we are. Fast forward to present day. The VIX is below 15, uh, going back about a month or so, roughly. You can check the charts. It's around 4,000 S&P 500 up until very recently. Very recently, this past week, if we were to check the stock market or the VIX in the past couple days, we're above 15. I know it doesn't really show it in this chart. But if you zoom in, the VIX is now above 15. Now, it doesn't mean the stock market's going to stop going up. The real big level, by the way, that we should watch in terms of the VIX is 20. 20 and 40. If the VIX is below 20, it shows us the stock market's trending higher. If the VIX is approaching 40, 35, 40, 45, it usually means the stock market's in trouble. Just to be aware, though, the ultra strong trending markets occur sub 15 VIX, which has not been the case for the first time in about a month. We're at about VIX 15.5, 16 or so. This is a daily point change in VIX. The S&P 500 is in red. The white histogram bar that just uh, in the past 
two, three trading days, it went up two points. Two points in one day. That's a pretty fast move. That coincides with a very steep move to the downside we saw just two days ago on the stock market. We haven't had the, S uh, the VIX go up two points in one day going back well till May and then before that March. It's not a huge occurrence, but it is something to be aware of. Two point days on the VIX of the upside, it's not something that happens every day. Most people wouldn't even, you know, make a note of it. But if you really want to focus in on the micro, two points to the upside on the VIX, I think is something to make note of. Now, here's the VIX in white uh, and the S&P 500 in red. And again, we see, call this a little horseshoe pattern over here, or a teacup pattern, I guess they call it. This is the VIX sub 15 that started early June, actually more than a month, about early, about six, seven weeks. We had sub 15 VIX. Well, does that mean we're going to go above 20? We haven't been above 20 in quite a while, actually, since April or so. Notice how much uh, the stock market pulled down the last time the VIX was above 20. Well, since the VIX crossed back below 20, a nice, strong rally. Now, it doesn't mean this rally is over. But just be aware, if this is a reversal, this looks like the beginning of it. But we don't know. It looks like the beginning. Or, if you're an optimist and you like what the bond market is telling us, Maybe we buy in this trend line. I'm sure if you look at the moving averages, we probably pulled back to the 20 simple moving average or so. Maybe this is a good buying opportunity if the VIX stays below 20. And really, we want to see it stay around 17, 17 and a half, my opinion. Now, with that said, We've seen a little bit of stock market weakness recently. Uh, some poor economic numbers coming out of China this morning. Uh, we had some downgrades and some banks, you know, things of that nature. We had a couple of Fed speakers uh, speak today. One was a voting member, one was not. Their tone was optimistic. We, I really want to start covering the Fed speakers too, because I think it's very, it's a very interesting backstory, and we're going to try to, you know, address that as well. What we're looking at here, though, are the federal funds futures. And this gives us the probability that the Federal Reserve is either going to keep interest rates where they are now at 525 to 550 range or raise interest rates from 550 to 575. On the left-hand side, this is these are the actual numbers. And you'll notice what happened over here on the left-hand side going back to uh, – you know, mid-July, late July, 78%, 79 80%. All of a sudden, we had that jobs number last week, and uh, the jobs number was soft. Well, what does a soft jobs number mean? Federal Reserve's less likely to raise interest rates. And, and I think we spoke about this during the non-farm payroll uh, discussion last week. That's when we jumped from 82 to 87%. 85, now we're 86.5. I wouldn't pay attention too much to the half point fluctuation over here. Now, the blue line represents the chances the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates from 525.50 to 555.75. Well, prior to the non-farm payrolls, we had a 20%, 19-18%. Non-farm payrolls, job market's not as good. Well, now we have a 13, 15, 13.5%. Now, Federal Reserve has a dual mandate. They have to keep inflation at bay. They have a 2% inflation target. The last CPI was 3.1. Believe it, yeah, I think it was 3.1. Uh, PPI is close to that. Uh, PCE, personal consumption expenditures, in that range as well. The other side of the dual mandate is job growth. And that we have, they have to create and maintain a stable economy. They can't just raise interest rates to the roof to keep inflation down and destroy the jobs market. So it's a careful balance between the two. Now, every economic number, when we see inflation goes up, Federal Reserve says, okay, we got to raise interest rates. And then we see this red line, maybe that'll go down and the blue line will go up, indicating the Federal Reserve has to raise interest rates. But conversely, right over here, that's a jobs number. Jobs number was soft. And what does that tell us? Well, if the jobs are a little soft, maybe the Federal Reserve has to back off the gas pedal, back off raising interest rates. The probability they're going to stay put grows a little. That's a dynamic. Well, I don't know. We don't have a lot of news tomorrow, but Thursday, 
and Friday inflation numbers. We're definitely going to revisit federal funds futures. We want to see where they are. Now, if we see, for example, inflation, let's say it comes in 2.5% below last month, really approaching their target, that tells us the Federal Reserve is less likely to raise interest rates, more likely to keep us at 525, 550. Maybe this 87 goes up to 90. Maybe this 14% probability of a hike goes down to 10. Conversely, let's say inflation is through the roof, 3.5, 4%, 4%, 3.5%, 3.5%. Maybe this we see this 87 drop down to 80. Maybe see the 14 drop, uh, jump up to 20. So that really is you know the game at this point. If we're watching the calendar because the Federal Reserve is watching the economic calendar over here. And why is this important? The last time we were watching this, remember, the Federal Reserve met, not the last meeting, the prior meeting that was at June when they kept interest rates unchanged. And then they released the, 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 the minutes a few weeks later. And the minutes really indicated that you know, they're going to raise interest rates again you know, this past month, July. Well, when we saw those minutes released, the the possibility of a hike, we were at the 5.0 to 5.25. That 5.25 to 5.50 jumped. And that led off a huge stock market rally. The last S&P 500 push that we're experiencing right now. So if we read the minutes and we and we saw the federal funds futures change, we would have been able to get in on a really nice S&P 500 rally. Well, now the question is, if the Federal Reserve looks at the inflation numbers on Thursday and Friday and they see, let's say, soft inflation and say, uh oh, maybe you know the, the economy is in trouble. Let's say we see some bad news out there. Well, that could spell some trouble for the stock market. Maybe the VIX goes up to 20. Maybe even more than that. So, you know, everything sort of balances off of each other. And it's one one very, very interesting economic drama that we, we tend to, you know, we see fold out every single day. So we're going to watch all this very carefully and we'll, we'll be sure to update you along the way with any significant changes. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.